all the time trying to keep it real and I don't sugarcoat anything but um, this is a cancer update and it has now been a year since my treatment stopped and I think I probably mentioned this in another video that for whatever reason I thought that the day after treatment stopped everything went back to normal and that has definitely not been the case so so many things have happened I've said this to a lot of people but honestly the recovery from the cancer treatment was worse than the cancer treatment um, there were just so many things that I didn't know was going to happen during recovery and part of the reason why I'm bringing this up is we all see those posts on Facebook that goes something like um, a really long post if you know basically someone suffering from cancer or who is you know battling cancer or who has passed away because of cancer those really long posts and they actually talk about how long they are like they're trying to get you to read all the way to the end and do some action like whatever then share it and let me tell you those posts don't even touch on what really happens when you go through cancer treatment or recovery I get that those posts bring attention to cancer but you would never really understand like there's no way to explain it so in the last year let me tell you the things that the issues that I've had my cat walking across the counter show you the issues or tell you the issues that I've had um, today I do not have my dentures in and it kind of makes it a little difficult to talk because I've gotten used to wearing the dentures and I don't have the dentures in because I have some sort of a place along my gums like a knot like a, um, a bump and I'm trying to not get concerned about it because there have been a few places inside my mouth post cancer treatment that makes you think oh my god the cancer is coming back so I'm trying to not get too concerned about it but it's large enough that it actually causes pain if I wear my dentures so I got them out today um, Another thing, I've been constantly fighting with my thyroid. And matter of fact, you can see that I have on a toboggan and a hoodie. And uh, it's 74 degrees in my house. I have on a full merino wool base layer. Wool socks, tennis shoes, the heaviest fleece sweatpants that I own. A t-shirt a hoodie, a toboggan, and a duck down coat and I'm freezing to death. And you would say, oh, you should just turn the heat up. But it don't work. I am the same level of freezing to death whether it's 50 degrees in here or 60 degrees or 70 or 80. I think once it was even up to 82 and I still had on basically the same clothes when I get off work and if I go to watch TV or something I literally have three blankets over me with these clothes and one of the blankets is a wool blanket I'll still be freezing 
Now, all of that is mostly caused by the thyroid. Um, I don't know how many times they raise the prescription and just can't get it under control or right. Another thing I try to explain to people is my memory thoughts aren't aren't like they used to be. Not even close. I used to be able, people used to be amazed at how many things I could juggle at one time. I mean, I basically have a full-time job plus a homestead that's like a full-time job. And I might have five or ten projects at my job I'm man managing and then another five or ten projects, big projects that I'm managing around the homestead plus all the little things and never had troubles with that one bit. Now I have what I call here now or fire, fire projects. I can manage exactly one thing, start to finish. If I get interrupted while doing that one thing, or I get, I can't say focus on that one thing because I got people talking to me on the side or asking me questions while I'm trying to focus, I may very well snap. Because I just, it's, it's too much to think about. Like there's too much happening. And if you talk about like all the things I think of in my head, I've tried to explain it like you have 7 million thoughts and you can't focus on even one. Like you can't just grab one and focus on it. You have all this noise all the time and you have to sort through the noise and then once you find what you want to focus on you have to block out all the noise and focus on that one thing because if you get sidetracked for even a second you'll totally forget what you were working on because there's so much other noise and uh so that, that's definitely been an issue. Um, you know, there's a constant worry that I'm not, I know I'm not performing 100% me, regular me pre-cancer. So also in the back of your mind is, you know, am I going to have a job tomorrow? Am I going to mess up? Am I underperforming and everybody knows it? You, you just, so many things go through your mind. And you try not to let that get you down because, you know, if I lost my job, I wouldn't have insurance. All kinds of things change. And, uh, so again, I'm trying to be real about what I'm experiencing going through cancer recovery. And I'm doing this to prepare other people who are battling cancer now, what they are likely going to face post-cancer. And I also am kind of doing it for the people that know somebody either battling cancer or going through chemo and radiation recovery. Because that person that you once knew they really are not the same person anymore. And I don't really know how to explain it. Like, you know, I, I've tried to give examples here, but I just literally do not feel like, like I'm the same person. Like my, my soul is gone or something. It's a, uh, I don't know. You know, people 
people expect so much from me. But they really don't understand the struggle. So if you know somebody battling cancer or in cancer recovery, just realize that ain't the person you knew. They're not going to act the same. They're not going to think the same. They're not going to feel the same. And the worst thing that you can do is is to is, is to let them know that you know that they're not the same. Because the person already knows they're not the same. And they're battling to try to find some kind of normalcy. So when you bring up things like, oh, you used to. Well, I know I used to. And I can't right now. The best thing to do is to just let that person know that you care for them and that you're going to be there for them. That's it.